I thought we'd have a look at the blood supply to the hand because it's, it's quite pretty. <laughs> um, these are the blood vessels that supply a really important part of the body. There's a lot of redundancy in here, which means you can have quite severe injuries uh, and yet retain blood flow to a digit. And of course, these are the things, these are the arteries that, that constrict and limit blood flow to the hand when you get cold and give you really cold fingers and what have you. So I thought what we do is we should look at what arteries supply blood to the hand. We should look at the lovely arcades, the, the loops, the anastomoses that they form and the major branches that come off them to the digits. Um, and then we should consider uh, what about the blood supply to the back of the hand? The palmar surface gets talked about a lot. The dorsal surface, not so much, so we'll just bolt it on. First things first then, what are the arteries that supply blood to the hand? Well, we have a radial pulse here. That's the one that's easiest to palpate. So there's a radial artery here and you can if you're patient enough and you really get in there, feel an ulnar pulse. We have the ulnar artery and the radial artery are both supplying blood whoop, to the hand. They're both going into the hand. They're both supplying blood in this direction and they both come from a single brachial artery here, which splits whoop, into ulnar and radial arteries, which travel down the forearm to the wrist and the hand. Now, when they get into the hand, we can see here, the superficial palmar arch. Yeah. Um, so they form two arches, these anastomoses within the hand. And from these anastomoses, we can see blood vessels running off towards the digits. Um, so when we consider anastomoses, two blood vessels coming together and joining, this means that if one blood vessel gets occluded, blocked, injured, severed, the other blood vessel will still be able to supply blood to the region that needs blood, right? There's a reduced risk of ischemia. Um, and this is quite a good example, actually. So when we see anastomosis elsewhere in the body, people often get confused as to the flow of blood, which way it's going in, where does the blood go out to? Because you can't see the smaller vessels coming from the, the arch from the anastomosis, but in the hand we can. So I think it's quite clear to see where the blood flows around and then off out to the digits. Keep that visual in mind when you're thinking about other anastomoses. Okay, so let's talk about the arches. There are two palmar, so on the palmar side, palmar dorsal, there are two palmar arches, a superficial palmar arch and a deep palmar arch. Now be careful here. So what we can see here is the superficial palmar arch. And, okay, so the radial artery here, can you see how it's actually giving off a branch which is running across the anterior wrist and into the superficial, superficial palmar arch of the hand. This is the superficial branch of the radial artery. The radial artery itself, or you might call this the deep branch, actually continues posteriorly around the thumb into the anatomical snuff box and into the, the posterior hand here. So the superficial palmar arch is, is formed by the ulnar artery here and the superficial branch of the radial artery coming together. And the ulnar artery is the dominant partner in that, as in the ulnar artery is, is, is delivering most of the blood to the superficial palmar arch. If you studied hand anatomy, you'll be thinking, but the, the superficial branch of the radial nerve runs posteriorly, right? So the superficial branch of the radial nerve runs posteriorly to the, to the posterior thumb or the posterior, the dorsal web space there. Whereas the superficial branch of the radial artery is running anteriorly into the palm, into the superficial palmar arch. Good, care is needed there. Okay, so the superficial palmar arch, okay, what we can't see is, is that there's actually a layer between the skin and that. 
So this is the palmar aponeurosis. This is a thick connective tissue in the palm of your hand that's tightly tucked to your, stuck to your skin, which makes dissecting the, the hand really, really tricky. It takes a very, very long time, but it's good for you because it means that you, you can grip things really, really well because the, you know, the rest of your body, your skin's kind of sliding around over the top of the muscle, whereas here, your skin is not sliding around, so you can pick things up securely. So, take away the skin, take away the palmar aponeurosis, and then we see the superficial palmar arch, this arterial arcade here. So it's deep to the palmar aponeurosis, but it's superficial to these tendons here. These tendons are running to the fingers, the digits, and they are gonna flex the digits. So um, this would be flexor digitorum superficialis tendons here. All right? so. That's where the superficial palmar arch is. Now, if we take away those tendons and we can see in between these tendons, the lumbrical muscles. And in fact, if we take away the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus, and we take away the lumbricals and we take away the superficial palmar arch, then we see the deep palmar arch in here. So this muscle here, this fan shaped muscle is adductor pollicis brings the thumb back, adducts the thumb. So, um, and then we've got the metacarpal bones in here and the, the dorsal, in, sorry, the palmar interosseous muscles here. So we're quite deep in the hand. So this is where the deep palmar arch lies. Um, the deep palmar arch then is also formed by the ulna and radial arteries, but we can't, we can't see a continuity there. What's happening is, is that the, the radial artery is continuing around posteriorly to the thumb, around here, and then it's passing between the heads of adductor pollicis. So it's passing from dorsal to palmar, and then it enters and starts to form the deep palmar arch. So, this probably makes it a bit easier to remember, the deep palmar arch is formed from a deep branch of the ulnar artery, diving deep, and the deep branch of the radial artery coming together deep in the palm of the hand, that is the palmar surface anterior to the metacarpals, to form the deep palmar arch. The deep branch of the radial artery is the larger branch, so it's said that the deep branch of the radial artery is the artery contributing most to the deep palmar arch, or it's the dominant artery. So those are the two arches in the hand. Now we should look at the branches that come off them and run to the digits, and then we're done in the palm. Okay, then let's take the branches of the superficial palmar arch first, and they're pretty straightforward. We have um, what get called common digital arteries. So one, two, three common digital arteries, extending kind of, where the metacarpal bones are, out towards the digits, we have these common palmar digital arteries here, and then look, as we get up towards like the web space between the fingers, they divide into palmar digital arteries. So it goes left and right to each finger. So then uh, you have these, these palmar digital arteries running up, pretty superficial, but there's one on either side. So there isn't just one artery to each finger, there's, there's at least two. Now, when we get to the little finger, so we've got a branch here, and this branch runs to the little finger. So this is still a palmar digital artery. It's not gonna branch into two, it just continues as one, but it sometimes gets called the ulnar digital branch or the palmar ulnar digital branch of the little finger or something like that. So the superficial palmar arch gives off common palmar digital arteries, which then divide into proper palmar digital arteries to each finger, and a final ulna palmar digital branch to the little finger. What about the deep arch then? Right, so the, um, the deep palmar arch, 
we're considering, we're, we're now thinking about the thumb and the index finger, right? So now what we, what we see here is here's a ductor pollicis and we can see an artery here, but normally we'd see an artery appearing posterior to a ductor pollicis and then running up the thumb and becoming a couple of proper digital arteries again. That artery to the thumb is an important one. It gets called princeps pollicis or princeps pollicis. Um, it's a major artery to the thumb and I haven't detected the thumb for a while, but most atlases I look at show the artery running in, in that way. Now we can see this artery here running up the, 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 the radial side of the index finger and that gets called radialis indicis or radialis indicis, talking about the index finger. So the index finger and the thumb take arteries from the deep palmar arch. The deep palmar arch also gives off some other arteries that run with or in between the metacarpal bones, which get called the palmar metacarpal arteries. And these are actually gonna run and join with these common palmar digital arteries that we saw coming from the superficial palmar arch. So we have anastomosis between the deep arch and the superficial arch through those metacarpal branches. So there are lots of links in the hand. There's a lot of redundancy. So those are the arteries of the palm, the two RKs. These are the things that people talk about the most, but there are also arteries on the dorsal surface. They don't get talked about a lot. Um, you can read different things about different bits and bobs, but we should cover a couple of things. So there are another two arteries that bring blood to the dorsal surface of the wrist. Now I don't know, no, they're not gonna be on here, but um, between the, the bones of the wrist, the, between the bones, the two bones of the forearm is an interosseous membrane, literally membrane between bones, interosseous. And there is an artery running posterior to that and an artery running anterior to it. So we have posterior and anterior interosseous arteries. There's a little gap in that membrane at the wrist end, at the, at the distal end, and there's a perforating branch of the anterior interosseous artery jumps through there. And in so doing, the posterior interosseous artery and that perforating branch of the anterior interosseous artery pass to the back of the wrist and supply blood to the wrist. There are also carpal branches of the ulnar artery and the radial artery, confusing things even more. So we're starting, what we're thinking about now is we're thinking about some arteries on the posterior surface of the wrist at the wrist level, and they give off some branches. Um, we can see some of them here. The best way to describe this is probably to lump them all together in that there is a, if you take for granted, there is a dorsal carpal network or dorsal carpal arch of arteries around the dorsal wrist which then give off dorsal metacarpal branches which then give off dorsal digital branches or dorsal digital proper branches maybe um, to the fingers and they give off you know some some at some point there is going to be a um, an indicus dorsalis so a dorsal artery to the index finger and there's going to be a dorsalis pollicis or pollicis, a dorsalis pollicis artery supplying blood to the dorsal side of the thumb. And to be fair, those arteries could come from the radial artery directly, or they could come from parts of this carpal network. It's, it's reasonably well described, but it's, you won't read one definitive description of it. And that's it. That's the blood supply to the hand. So remember the main two arteries, radial and ulnar, the superficial and deep palmar arches, how they link. Consider the branches that come from them. So the deep palmar arch is giving that blood vessel to the thumb and the index finger. The superficial arch is giving off those, those common palmar branches, which are then going to go to the fingers and so on. And to remember the layers that they're in and then dorsally we have a network of arteries around the wrist that give off a similar arrangement of dorsal arteries to the hand there are lots of anastomoses lots of overlap lots of redundancy meaning that severe lacerations to the hand um, digits can still survive okay nailed it i think <laughs>